In this video, I'm covering the top 15 competency-based interview questions and answers. So this video is for you if you struggle with competency-based questions, you're in the right place. I want to continue the amazing results that you guys have been getting and get much, much more of you into your ideal roles quickly. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to answer 15 of the most difficult interview questions and answers. So that includes actual full examples that you can take away and use, including how to use the STAR method in your answers, what structure to use, when to use it, and when not to, plus a ton of freebies and resources to help you pass your interview. I'm Amri Celeste, your interview coach. You can connect with me or follow me or just say hello on any of these social media channels. If you've been watching for a while, then I do hope you're subscribed. If not, do take a moment to do so and hit the notification bell as well. Now let's jump in. So what is the difference between competency-based interview questions and other types, such as behavioral interview questions and situational interview questions? Competency-based questions specifically assess your ability to do something. So competency is almost an overarching phrase that covers the majority of interview questions, like some situational and behavioral as well. So competency is your ability to do something successfully or efficiently. So the main difference between competency and behavioral questions is that behavioral questions are exclusively assessing your behaviors, but competency-based questions aren't. Um, they can, but they can also assess other abilities and tasks as well. Now, if you know behavioral questions are a challenge for you and they are very tough interview questions, then I highly recommend that you watch this video covering the top 15 behavioral interview questions and answers so that you're fully prepared for those interview questions. Now, the difference with competency and situational are that situational questions are specifically asking about a time when you did something, always set in in the past. So they'll normally start with describe a time when, tell me about a time when, how have you, even how do you. So for example, how do you handle conflict? So it's not asking about a time when you did, but you can still include a situation where you handle conflict in the past to boost your answer. The top 10 situational interview questions and answers are in this video, which I will link below. So here are the top 15 competency-based interview questions and answers. Question one is, can you tell me about a time when you failed? An example answer is, in my previous job as a project manager, I was leading a team to implement a new piece of software for our client. I needed to ensure that the project was completed on time, within budget, and met the client's expectations and requirements. During the project, we encountered a major technical issue that I was unable to resolve on my own. I didn't want to disrupt the specialist technical team further as they had already assisted us on the project. Unfortunately, my attempts to fix the issue only made things worse, and this misjudgment caused a significant delay to the project. I now decided to reach out to the technical team and be transparent about the issue. I also checked how long it would take to fix so I could update our client. I then contacted the client so they were aware of the delay. Finally, I worked collaboratively with the technical team to find a solution that not only resolved the issue, but prevented similar problems from arising in future. And the client said that this only caused minimal delays on their side. Now, you might have noticed in that answer that I use the STAR method. If you're subscribed, then you're used to my STAR method questions and answers. This method keeps your answer structured, impactful, and memorable, and it keeps the interviewer engaged. So what is the STAR method. STAR stands for Situation Task Action Result. It can also be referred to as the STAR interview method or the STAR technique. The STAR method is a framework that you can use to structure your answers while covering all the points that the interviewer is looking for. I cover the top 22 STAR method interview questions and answers in this video. I'll link that in the description. So let's look at how that answer to tell me about a time you failed fits into the STAR method so you can use key areas in your interview. So the situation is that you were working on a project. The task was to complete the project on time in budget and fix the technical issue. The action was communicating with the technical team and the client. And the result was that the issue was fixed and had no major delays to the client. So why is this a good answer and how can I use it? So this answer clearly explained what the failure was. It was trying to fix the issue yourself and not wanting to disrupt another team instead of going to the specialist to fix a specialist issue. And that's 
what the interviewer wants to know. So a common interview mistake is candidates try to turn their answer into too much of a hero story, which sounds inauthentic. So in your interview, you want to share a time when you actually had an oversight, a misstep, or didn't double check something or similar, like in this answer. The key is to talk about how you overcame it or what you learned, um, or both, um, as long as it doesn't make your answer too long. The strongest part of that answer is here, where it talks about being transparent and going to the right team to communicate the issue, then communicating with the client because it shows that you're able to consider the impact of actions that you've taken and take steps that may be uncomfortable to get that fixed. So I say this often, but communication should always underpin your approach when you're dealing with a potentially negative situation at work, whether conflict, failure, or anything else. If you're not in management, then you can use an example like forgetting to attend a crucial meeting, overpromising, or failing to follow through on a commitment to a colleague. Question two is why should we hire you? So this question is competency based because it's an overall assessment of your ability to do the job, your overall competency, as opposed to assessing a specific area like failure, like in the last question. So I'm going to use a receptionist role as an example here. I believe a strong receptionist is one that has a range of strengths. I have a variety of transferable skills and relevant experience that I think would make me ideal for the role. I have a proven track record of consistently delivering high quality customer service, even in pressurized and challenging environments, such as company event days, where we have hundreds of visitors to the reception area. So I'm used to dealing with volume. I think an effective receptionist is one who is adaptable as well as one that visitors are comfortable to approach. And I have excellent results from customer feedback surveys in my last role. Customers fed back that they thought I had a warm and friendly demeanor and paid attention to detail. I I also noticed on the job description that initiative is key in this role. So I wanted to share how I've used my initiative in my previous role. I noticed the high volume of callers to the company. So I researched ways to reduce the wait time for callers and streamline the meeting room booking process by suggesting we implement a new phone system and scheduling software for a more efficient process. This ended up saving time and reducing my colleagues' workload. A lot of people struggle with the question, why should we hire? you. It's a really common interview question. So if this is helpful, do leave a comment and click like. This helps this question show up for more people on YouTube. And there are other ways to support the channel as well, such as buying me a coffee if you've already had great results. So there's steps on how to do that in the description box below. So why is this a good answer and how can I use it? This answer demonstrates so much that you can and should use in your interview for an impactful answer. So first of all, start your answer by explaining that there is more than one reason that they should hire you. This preps them for a multifaceted answer. You're about to hit them with a massive ton of skills that make you the best choice. That's why I started here with a strong receptionist has a range of skills, or I have a variety of skills, or I have a combination of is fine too. Then phrases like such as here where it mentions company event days are key. This is similar to the phrase for example because that indicates that you are going to back up the skill you've just mentioned with a quick example like company event days. The next part is really powerful because it builds up an ideal candidate and then explains how you fit perfectly into that mold here where it says an effective receptionist is one who is adaptable as well as comfortable to approach. Then explains that you are that. And there's the proof, the customer survey. So in your interview, anywhere where you can include short examples or proof is key. And here's the power tip. Whenever you say, I noticed on your LinkedIn page, or I noticed on the job description or your company website, that is you sneaking into the answer that you prepared for the interview, which is music to the interviewer's ears because it means that you are taking the job seriously. Then it ends here with a strong example that links to what they're looking for in the job, which is initiative. In your own interview, any examples you can include that solve multiple problems in one are basically a home run answer. Now, I didn't use the star method in that answer. You can use the star method example, but be aware that it makes your answer longer. So the rest of your answer needs to be very structured so that you don't lose the interviewer's attention. Question three is describe yourself in three words 
words. This question is indirectly testing your competency. Do the words you use to describe yourself match with key behaviors and characteristics required in the role. So here's how to choose words that the interviewer needs to hear in order to decide that you are the perfect candidate for the job. Look at the job description before your interview. The words on there describe what they want to see, particularly under skills, experience, or behaviors. So here's an example. So let's say that you're going for a marketing specialist role and three of the, the behaviors and skills are curiosity, persuasiveness, and an analytical nature. So here's what that would look like in an answer. Yes, I can describe myself in three words. The first word I would use is curious. I love the challenge of understanding consumer behavior and finding new and innovative ways to reach and engage with them. Marketing is always evolving and I find it exciting to stay ahead of the current trends. As part of being naturally curious, I make an active effort to enhance my skills and knowledge by attending industry conferences and marketing courses. I also pay close attention to changes in social media and the increasing use of artificial intelligence in marketing. Second word I would use to describe myself would be persuasive. I really enjoy storytelling and I have a strong desire to understand different perspectives and use that knowledge to craft compelling and persuasive narratives that resonate with target audiences. For my third skill, I would say I'm quite analytical. So one thing that attracts me to marketing is the need to analyze large amounts of data to inform and optimize marketing methods. I really enjoy this and I consider it to be one of my key skills as well as how I describe myself. So that's an example of demonstrating relevant characteristics, skills and behaviors. But of course, you need to have a look at your own job description to see what behaviors and skills are on there. Now, do you ever feel like you're not making the most of your skills and experience in your interview? If you want to learn how to articulate your strengths clearly, persuasively, and leave a powerful impression on your potential employer, then join Interview Mastery. In a few short modules, you can master advanced techniques and build unbreakable confidence. You can click on the link in the description below this video to learn more. The next question is how do you handle pressure at work? With this one, first summarize your answer and then give an example of a pressurized situation you experienced and overcame that would be relevant to the job that you're going for. Here's the example answer. I think effective pressure management requires a combination of organizational skills, time management, communication, and self-care. I assess tasks based on their importance and deadline. This helps me to focus on what needs to be done first and avoid getting overwhelmed. I also create a schedule that includes breaks so that I can stay refreshed and focused. I communicate with colleagues and management to ensure that everyone is aware of the project status and any challenges, and this helps to reduce misunderstandings. For example, in my current role, I'm working on a product launch project. This carries a significant amount of pressure because it's tied to a critical component of the company's revenue growth strategy. The project also has tight deadlines and a lot of stakeholder involvement. It's quite pressurized, so I communicate timelines to key players in the project at the start in order to set their expectations and minimize the number of unrealistic demands, which is sometimes standard when working with senior management. When I put together timelines, I factored in the additional time for myself in case of unexpected changes so I could under promise and over deliver. This extra time also included breaks because I find that I do my best work when my mind is fresh and can generate creative ideas. So why is this a good answer and how can I use it? A great part of this answer is where you cover all the things needed for effective pressure management. It demonstrates that you have a deep understanding of the principles of managing pressure here, organization, time management, communication, self-care. Then you're hitting them with a ton of pressure management tools and skills, assessing each task against importance and deadline, including breaks and keeping everyone informed. Then the clincher. So I said earlier that for example is a key phrase. So you're not using the star method here, but you're outlining a story which is easier for the interviewer to take in the project and everything that you did along the way to manage pressure. And when you say things like, 
I minimized the number of unrealistic demands, which regularly comes from working with senior management or can come with that, you might get a bit of a laugh because senior staff normally know that they're demanding and those who aren't senior know how unrealistic senior management can be with requests. So you're demonstrating that you understand the pressures of working with high level staff and how to manage their expectations. Now, I didn't use the STAR method here because while it's a brilliant tool, you don't always need to use it. It can make your answer longer, as I mentioned before. So do be aware of that. Question five is how would you describe your work ethic? So this is a tough interview question. And an example answer is, I believe I have a strong work ethic and I'm completely committed to what I do. As an office administrator, I've seen how my role underpins and supports the smooth running of key areas of the company, such as managing invoices, which affects budgets and forecasting. Now, in order to go above and beyond in my role, I look for ways to streamline processes and improve efficiency. So whether that means digitizing records, automating procedures, or suggesting up-to-date software tools, I also think working collaboratively is important to maintain your work ethic so you can learn from colleagues and stay clear on what your shared goals are. I think that all of these elements are critical to a strong work ethic, which is how I would describe mine. So in your own answer, it helps to keep things structured and separate it into parts. The first part of that answer is about how your role contributes to the company. So pointing out key areas that are affected by what you do is a brilliant way to demonstrate that. And I've used that phrase that I mentioned earlier, such as, and followed that up with a quick example. So those little interview techniques are what take your answers up a level and put your skills front and center. Now, there are three things you want to absolutely nail before your interview. Your key skills, like I just showed you, your interview answers to key questions and your interview prep. You up your chances of failing significantly if you don't prep. So this is how you can easily nail answers and prep. Download this free guide that includes answers to the top 20 difficult interview questions. These answers are effective, memorable, and proven to get results, including answers to what is your biggest achievement and what would you do if we didn't offer you this job. I'll also throw in this prep guide, which covers a few simple prep steps to secure yourself a job offer. They're both totally free and you can get them in the description below. Question six is how do you handle a challenge? I'm definitely energized by a good challenge. I think that they are great for building skills and personal character. In terms of how I handle it, I think most challenges are best addressed with a clear plan and as much preparation as time allows. One challenge I faced at work was when I was asked to lead a training session for a large team on a new customer service protocol that was critical to improving customer retention. While I was confident in my knowledge of the protocol, I'd never had a training session for such a large group and I was worried about how I would keep everyone engaged and make sure that they understood the material. I first decided to review the material and make sure that I had a deep understanding of the steps and procedures. I then worked with the HR department to design engaging presentation slides, including role-playing exercises and interactive discussions. By taking this kind of planful, strategic and proactive approach, the training session had a great outcome. The team was engaged and interactive throughout the session, and they left with a clear understanding of how to implement the customer service protocol effectively. After the training, I received positive feedback from the team and our managers, and there was a notable difference in the following months in customer retention. So this example is, of course, specific to the type of role that might be linked to training, but the challenge could be arranging a complicated event or trip away. It could be understanding new software or a new process, or simply just dealing with a difficult colleague. So the key parts of this answer are here. In the task part of the STAR technique, it's clear what the challenge is, where it says, I'd never lead a training session for such a large group. In your interview, always assume the interviewer doesn't know and make it clear 
what the challenge was in the example that you're sharing. So the fact that you're concerned about making the session engaging and easy to understand here in the task part of the answer indicates that you understand how others learn and the importance of keeping and holding that attention. The next skill you're showing is collaboration. So this is a brilliant skill to demonstrate because the majority of jobs involve other people, whether it's your manager, colleagues, clients, customers, stakeholders, it doesn't matter. The ability to work collaboratively is very often assessed in interviews. So you need to demonstrate this in your answer. Just like here, where you worked with HR, you're giving credit where it's due, but at the end here, where you talk about positive feedback and the boost in customer retention, you're also selling your own skills and what you were able to achieve. Question seven is describe a time when you helped someone. So here's the example answer. One time I helped a colleague was when they were dealing with a difficult client. The client was unhappy with their team's work and was becoming increasingly demanding and critical in their communications, eventually asking for someone else to manage their account. My colleague became more and more stressed and this affected their demeanor and output at work. I noticed this and offered to sit with my colleague for a while. He seemed relieved to be able to verbally share the situation with someone. I then decided to share some of the ways that I choose to deal with my most demanding clients, hoping it might be helpful. We discussed the client's main concerns and setting clear expectations and boundaries so the client could understand what is and isn't possible within the scope of the project. With these strategies in mind, my colleague went back to the client and told them he would be happy to assign someone else to the account, but first asked if they can review the previous challenges to prevent the same things from occurring again. He explained what could realistically be achieved in the project and what boundaries there should have been. My colleague also apologized for the areas where he dropped the ball. The client was impressed with my colleague's level of honesty and transparency and wanted to continue working with him. I had lunch with this colleague a few months later and he told me that the relationship with the client has significantly improved. So why is this a good answer and how can I use it? So this answer is specifically designed to promote your ability to solve problems, show empathy, recognize when colleagues are struggling, as well as answering the question and sharing how you help someone. In your answer, if you can show multiple positive outcomes, that is a huge bonus for demonstrating your skills. So in this answer, the outcomes were that your colleague was able to improve the relationship with their client, set boundaries, as well as the client um, not having to start all over again with a new colleague. So this is definitely a difficult interview question because helping someone isn't automatically aligned with every type of role. So it can be difficult to know what to include in your answer. Question eight is tell me about a time you solved a problem. I was part of a team working on a project with a tight deadline and one of our team members unexpectedly fell ill. This team member was responsible for a critical component of the project and their absence was jeopardizing our ability to complete the project on time. To solve the problem, I worked with the remaining team members to look at solutions and the team suggested reassigning tasks and responsibilities. I considered the team's capabilities and resources and realized that we were missing some of the critical skill sets that we would need to cover our colleagues' work as they were a specialist in their area. So I decided to mention this and suggest that due to lack of time and the project deadline, we hire a specialist freelancer instead of reassigning tasks. My colleagues agreed that this would be a good idea. So we worked quickly to hire and onboard a freelancer and integrate them into the project team and bring them up to speed on the project goals and timelines. I felt that my suggestion was critical to solving this problem, although finding a freelancer and the ultimate outcome was definitely a collaborative team effort. And due to this, we were able to complete the project on time and to a high standard. The client was pleased with the outcome and we left feeling proud of what we had achieved in the face of such an unexpected problem. So why is this a good answer and how can I use it? A key common interview mistake with this is that candidates don't give themselves 
credit for solving a problem. The question is, tell me about a time when you solved a problem. So it's important to highlight where your contributions actually were like here, where it says, I considered the team's capabilities. I realized that we were missing skill sets. I decided to mention this. And at the end, when it says, I felt my suggestion was critical to solving the problem. But of course, if it's something in a team, you don't want to come across arrogant. So do assign credit where it's due to the team, like here, where it says that the overall outcome was a collaborative team effort. So in a group or team example, make it really clear what your contribution was. Question nine is what makes a good team member? I would say three attributes make a good team member. I think a good team member is one who is reliable, has a collaborative attitude, and is open to feedback. To me, this means a willingness to listen, learn from, and work with others, and is the whole spirit of being a good team member. This can mean being willing to attempt tasks you're not familiar with to benefit the team, to being willing to input and suggest thoughtful solutions in meetings and being open and willing to connect with the team. I would also say reliability is key. I think one of the most frustrating things for a team is knowing that one team member is consistently unreliable because it can increase workload and stress for others. Sometimes being reliable may mean juggling work and making small sacrifices in order to stick to your word and work with integrity. I believe this is the only way to drive progress. Lastly, I think being open to feedback is critically important in a team setting because working with someone who is rigidly set in their ways can delay progress as well as create an unpleasant working environment. If you don't have the last two skills, so you're not reliable or collaborative, but you are open to feedback, then that means that you can change and improve, but not being willing to consider feedback affects any other skill. If you haven't clicked like yet, do take a second to do so and leave a comment. It's a huge help and very much appreciated. Question 10 is describe a difficult situation and how you handled it include examples. As a security officer for a large stadium, I sometimes have to deal with large crowd numbers, but I can give an example of a specific situation a couple years ago where the event organizers had completely lost track of the volume of attendees and we ended up with thousands more than expected at a large music festival. This was definitely a difficult situation. A large number of attendees were trying to enter the festival grounds at the same time, creating significant crowd management issues that could potentially compromise the safety of attendees. I assess the situation by observing the crowd dynamics, number of attendees and capacity of the entry points. Then I communicated with my team members and festival organizers to understand the resources available to address it. We then worked to implement a new crowd management plan I helped to divert attendees to different entry points and create temporary queuing areas to reduce congestion. I also continued to monitor the crowd to ensure that the temporary queuing areas were safe and that attendees were not in danger of being crushed or trampled. We were able to manage the crowd effectively with minimal disruption and no major safety incidents. So why is this a good answer? How can I use it? Similar to question eight on problem solving, it's really clear throughout this answer what the contribution was to solving the problem. So things you can use from this answer are things like picking up on something that is about to get out of control, like a colleague not being compliant with guidelines or lack of communication, um, communicating with others to fix it and then getting involved and monitoring the progress all the way through, just like in that answer. Question 11 is why are you a good fit for this position? This is very similar to the question, why should we hire you? Why should we give you the job? What makes you the best candidate for this role? So I'm going to utilize the tips I gave you in question two, which was the answer to why should we hire you and apply it here for a PA or personal assistant role. I think you should hire me because I have a combination of really solid skills that I believe would add significant value in a role like this. You mentioned that you're looking for someone who's naturally organized. As you can see from my work history, I've been a PA for four years across two different jobs. I gravitate 
gravitate towards these jobs because I'm naturally organized. As a PA, I manage multiple calendars for very senior management, which allows me to utilize my organization skills on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm also very organized in my personal life. I use spreadsheets to manage my finances and apps to manage my time. In addition to this, I thoroughly enjoy building new relationships, which is a regular requirement of my current role. I'm regularly exposed to a variety of senior contacts internally and externally, which I noticed on the job description was another requirement of the role. Someone who's a natural communicator and can communicate with senior level management and enjoys building new relationships. Why is this a good answer and how can I use it? So I also use this answer in this video covering the top 22 common interview questions and answers, mainly because it is a very strong answer. And that includes all the key elements that you need to nail this tricky interview question. Question 12 is tell me about a time you had a conflict at work. I work closely with a colleague who used to consistently take credit for the work that I had done. I found this behavior frustrating and demotivating as I felt like my contributions were not being recognized by our supervisor. The colleague in question had a very outgoing and assertive personality, which made it difficult for me as someone who is more introverted. I was nervous about communicating my concerns directly to them. So I considered speaking to my manager or potentially their manager to avoid a potential confrontation. I decided to consider how I might feel having this feedback come from a manager instead of a colleague and decided to go directly to my colleague instead as I thought they would appreciate that more. I asked to speak to them privately. I explained how their actions were affecting me and my motivations at work. I highlighted specific examples of my work that they had taken credit for and how it had impacted my morale. To my surprise, my colleague was receptive to my concerns and they apologized for their behavior. They revealed that they had been feeling insecure about their own work and were worried about their job security, but hadn't considered the impact on me. And so they were very apologetic. The apology came across as sincere and they offered to take me to lunch to clear the air and build a better working relationship. Now, I always say that communication has to underpin your approach, especially when dealing with others in a conflict scenario. A strong part in that answer is taking into consideration how that colleague would have felt if you went around them to their manager. This kind of approach demonstrates empathy as well as a willingness to communicate and be transparent. Questions about conflict are extremely common. I cover more questions in this video on resolving conflict interview questions and answers. So you can check that out to be fully prepared. I'll link that in the description below along with the other videos. Question 13 is how would you deal with a difficult customer? I once took a phone call from an unhappy customer. He wanted to log a formal complaint and speak to management, and he didn't want to give any further information unless he was speaking to a manager. I wanted to see if I could calm the customer down and find a way to resolve the issue directly with him. I responded by remaining calm and empathizing with him. I explained that I understood that the issue must be quite serious and that he wanted to speak to a manager. I politely asked him if he could give me a little more information in order for me to pass him through. He explained that he had been charged twice for an item and had been on hold for over 40 minutes. I listened to the full issue gave him my name so that if he were cut off, he would know exactly who he spoke to and could come back through to me. I then asked him if he would be willing to share the order details with me so I can have a quick look. He agreed and it turned out that the customer had placed a double order and then canceled one, which caused the double charging. When I discovered this, I was able to reverse the order and send out a replacement receipt. I also apologize for the inconvenience. He had completely calmed down by this point and no longer requested to speak to a manager. He was satisfied with the refund and explanation. Now, if you've ever wondered how I come up with all these answers, it's quite easy. I follow a very simple technique that allows you to always generate a brilliant response, which I cover in my interview mastery program, which I mentioned earlier. So you can see that in question five. So if you feel like you're not making the most out of your skills and experience and you're leaving interviews feeling disappointed, then you can join in the description below to showcase your skills and abilities in the right way consistently. So why was that a good answer and how can you use it? So in that answer, the main thing I demonstrated, which is what you want to demonstrate in your interview, is the approach 
tone and demeanor of the customer service exec. So if you're answering a question like this, it helps to include a little bit of detail on the steps you took the customer or client through to calm them down, such as here where it explains, I explained I understood the issue must be quite serious. I gave him my name. I asked him if he were willing to share the details. So this demonstrates an ability to stay calm and to use simple questions and techniques to calm the customer down while you look into the issue. Question 14 is how do you stay organized? So here's the example. As an event coordinator, my job is incredibly busy. It has lots of moving parts and I might go from ensuring our venues have correct health and safety to checking display content. I've been doing this job for three years and I've lasted that long because I pride myself on organization. Although I consider myself to have a good memory, Part of being organized for me is planning ahead, monitoring progress and having a system in place so I don't forget critical tasks when things are busy. Part of that system is using tools to help me stay organized once plans are in place. One of the tools I use quite a lot is ClickUp. It's a project management tool that is perfect for managing large events. I did some research last year as I needed something more advanced to help me manage my time than what I was previously using. I use this tool to assign tasks, set reminders and deadlines, and I can even create documents inside the tool. I also use Outlook meeting polls. This is a bolt on tool that allows me to book meetings about four times faster. I noticed the button in Outlook, decided to try it out, and it allows me to instantly see when attendees are available and book them with a click of a button. So why is this a good answer and how can I use it? This answer is packed with solid, impressive examples of when someone understands process and planning. Here, you talk about having a good memory, but that you need a system to work efficiently. In your interview, use actual examples of tools like ClickUp and Outlook in that answer. Talk about the specific functions in the tool that you use and what you use them for. There's also a theme of continuous improvement here with Outlook where it mentions, I noticed a button and decided to try it out. Those who are naturally curious will always improve because you're willing to investigate and try out new tools and processes. The next question is tell me about a time when you disagreed with your boss. In my previous job, I worked as a marketing associate for a small consulting firm. Our boss had decided to allocate a significant portion of our marketing budget towards a traditional advertising campaign, which I believed was not the most effective use of our resources. As a marketing associate, it was my responsibility to provide recommendations on marketing strategies that would be most effective for our business. I felt strongly that the traditional advertising campaign would not generate the desired sales and that there were more cost-effective targeted approaches that we could explore. To address this disagreement with my boss, I gathered data and research to support my position. I prepared a report that outlined alternative marketing strategies and provided a cost benefit and analysis for each approach. I then scheduled a meeting with my boss and presented my findings. I explained my reasoning behind why I felt the traditional advertising campaign was not the most effective approach and presented the data that I had collected. My boss listened attentively to my argument and acknowledge the validity of my points. After further discussion, we agreed to explore alternative marketing strategies and to allocate a smaller portion of our budget towards traditional advertising. As a result, we were able to implement more targeted and cost-effective marketing strategies that generated a higher return on investment. Now, let me know what you need help with in the comments. Thank you so much for watching to the end and I will see you in the next video.